Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Rock. I know it's wrong to pick favourites, but I just can't help myself. I mean, come on. I can't love all of my cousins equally. And with that in mind, allow me to introduce you to my favourite members of the family. Chibi Robo. Paper Mario 64. Kirby Air Ride. Metroid Prime Trilogy. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Metroid Zero Mission. Mario Party 7. Rob. I'm broke. I don't know what I'm gonna do. As it stands, I don't have enough money to buy food, pay taxes, or buy my third copy of Mario Kart Wii. <sighs> maybe this is a care package from the bank. I did send out an SOS signal, so maybe they've decided to be nice and give me 15 pounds. smells a lot like the sweet, sweet smell of eviction. And also chloroform. Oh. What was that? Oh. oh my god. Stairs! Where the hell am I? What's going on? This could work. Video games! Describe them in four words. Go! Fucking expensive as fuck! Video games cost money. There's only so long you can ignore that fact before you're put in prison. It's something that us gamers have to accept. If you want FIFA 23, you better cough up some cash, bucko. Nowadays, a brand new video game can cost you anywhere from 50 to 70 dollars, which for some people is a big asking price for a game that has downloadable daisy and very little else. But what if you're going through a midlife crisis and you want to buy games for, gasp, not the most modern consoles? Sure, at one point in time there was a universal price for these things, but a lot of them have become a lot more rare and a lot more sought after now that they aren't readily available or being actively printed anymore. And that is how we end up with gadget racers costing nearly £500. Well, it would just be rude to let this go to waste. The price of a video game is an ever-changing and ever-fascinating topic, and also one that makes my wallet cower in fear. The prices of older games fluctuate like crazy, with no real rhyme or reason. The priciest game in a console's library today could be completely different in a month's time, for better or for worse. So, why not? Let's take a look at the priciest games on each of Nintendo's consoles as of March 2023 to see which of them are most worth spending a mortgage on. Now keep in mind, the priciest game on a console is most likely different in my neck of the woods compared to yours. I live in the UK, a nation that doesn't see as much value in gacha force as all of the Ohio dwellers. We definitely see some, but nowhere near as much. So, I'm going to be focusing on the priciest titles in each console's UK library, while also making sure to point out any notable regional differences. I'm going to be determining which games are the priciest based on a number of sources, mainly being price charts and CEX. Say what you will about CEX and overpricing, but generally speaking, they are a fairly reliable way to scope out the most or even least pricey game in a console's library. So with all of that being said, let's kick this off with... Oh Jesus! With the Nintendo Entertainment System being one of the first consoles to really hit it big, preservation of the medium was definitely a lot less of a priority as it is nowadays. Which is saying a lot when Super Mario 35 exists. Or rather, doesn't exist. 
So naturally, some NES games can be pretty hard to come by, and according to price charting, the most expensive game for this system, by a landslide, is Snowboard Challenge. The average price for a loose copy of this game, a standard ass cartridge and piss all else, is roughly $2,900 or around £2,400. Now, I enjoy an NES sports game as much as the next man, which is to say, I don't, but for over 2,000 goddamn pounds, this game better be the highest quality entertainment I've ever experienced in my life. This game is so damn elusive. CEX isn't even convinced the thing exists. And the same can be said for a good amount of the most expensive games listed on price charting. So if you were to take their word as gospel, you'd be living your life under the belief that Castlevania 3 is the most expensive NES game. Ha! <laughs> The most expensive Game Boy game here in PAL regions is World Heroes 2 Jet, going for around £230 loose according to price charting. If you were to ask CEX, they'd tell you that Hammer and Harry was the most expensive Game Boy game, to which price charting would justifiably respond, don't be so fucking asinine. Well, it's only the third most expensive Game Boy game. While we're here, we may as well discuss the Game Boy Color, and how could we possibly do that without discussing The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons Special Edition, going for a staggering... <laughs> Price Charting and CEX both agree that the most expensive Super Nintendo game is Mega Man X3, going for anywhere between £400 and £700 loose. Now, I've heard a lot of praise surrounding the Mega Man X games on the Super Nintendo. Such adoring comments as, they're good. But are any of these games over 400 pounds worth of good? Why bother getting up in the morning? I don't know. Now, of course, when talking about expensive Super Nintendo games, it's impossible not to mention two things. Earthbound and the Super Nintendo competition cartridges, neither of which came out in the UK. It's a national quirk. As a British collective, we are not allowed to be happy. Which is why we aren't phased by Mega Man X3's pricing. Outside of special editions and not for resale cards, Earthbound is one of the most expensive standard SNES games, going for around $300 loose. And if you're looking to nab yourself a complete in-box copy, f**k having a roof over my head, I'd rather have cardboard. This game is ridiculously expensive. But taking one look at how it was marketed, we should be thankful this game is as cheap as it is. The marketing for this game was horrible. All of the ads for this game boiled down to, this game will give you a pink eye, but wouldn't it be funny if you still bought it? And we wonder why the black market exists. Now, the competition cartridges are a lot more understandable to be going for ludicrous prices, because they were all either produced in extremely limited quantities, like the Donkey Kong Country competition cartridge and its 2,500 car print run, or they were never officially made available. And while I can obviously understand the appeal of owning something that rare and elusive, I mean, the Donkey Kong Country competition card is just a cheese-graded version of the original game. If you want the same experience, just buy a bog-standard Donkey Kong Country cartridge and an asshole roommate. When I was on the f***ing minecart level! The competition cartridges are cool, don't get me wrong, and they're an incredibly interesting part of Nintendo's history, but I just cannot imagine spending hundreds of pounds on something with barely any functionality. Yeah, I couldn't imagine it. Because I don't have to. Yes, I'm talking about the Virtual Boy, because what else was I gonna do? Not. With the Virtual Boy being the worst selling console to ever not be the Apple Bandai Pippin, not many people actually bought the games that released for this thing. And as such, a lot of them are pretty pricey. Now here in the UK, the most expensive Virtual Boy game is Whereas in the States, that award goes to Jack Bros, going for damn near $800 loose. 
This is actually a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei series, and was the first game in that series to release outside of Japan. So you're telling me that the first worldwide release in a previously Japan exclusive RPG series only released on the Virtual Boy, a platform that wasn't very well suited to RPGs, didn't sell well? What's next? You're gonna tell me the Virtual Lab is nearly $1400? Man, today is just not my day. The most expensive N64 game here in PAL regions is none other than StarCraft 64. Because StarCraft 63 was a complete f***ing letdown. The US has a lot of not for resale variants of N64 games, which are generally the priciest games in the library. But how would you ever know that? They're not for resale. So the priciest game that can be resold is Clay Fighter Director's Cut, an updated version of Clay Fighter 63 and a third that nobody wanted when it released. This game goes for around $900, which is an insane price to pay for an enhanced version on the same console. Yeah, The Last of Us Part 1 is priced ridiculously, there's no getting around that, but it could always be worse. The most expensive GBA game over here is Ninja Cop, the greatest oxymoron in all the land. And this game goes for around £200 loose. And I'm sorry, Ninja Cop could objectively be the greatest game to ever be crafted in the entire history of humanity, but when the cartridges are as f***ing dinky as they are, that purchase is never gonna feel justified if you ask me. Embrace the cardboard, it still won't be worth it. While we're on the topic of expensive GBA games, I have to ask, what the f***? is Pokemon's problem? Why are all of the Pokemon games on the GBA over 50 pounds? Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire 50 pounds each, Pokemon Leaf Green 60 pounds, Fire Red 70 pounds, Pokemon Emerald 85 fucking pounds. These were the best selling games on the goddamn console. Why in God's name are they so expensive? Like, yeah, Ninja Cop is more expensive than any of the Pokemon games, but I'm sorry. As much as I'm not a huge Pokemon fan, I'm so much more likely to buy these games compared to f***ing Ninja Cop. Take that back. Now. Oh boy, the Nintendo GameCube. Inarguably the top contributor to me not knowing where I live anymore. The GameCube is fucking stupid when it comes to how expensive its library can get. Odama, Dosh and the Giant, The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, Mario Party 6 and 7, Dancing Stage Mario Mix, fucking Animal Crossing, all slowly but surely creeping their way to the 100 pound mark. Mario Superstar Baseball, £110. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, £115. Chibi Robo, £220. Kirby Air Ride, £250. And these are just the ones I own! You know, why did I get evicted? Both CEX and Price Charting are in agreement that the most expensive GameCube game in PAL regions is Gadget Racers, going from anywhere between 330 and 485 pounds for a game with that box art. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness and Fire Emblem Path of Radiance follow this game closely too, alongside Frogger Beyond, the only game I could justify spending £250 on. In the States, there's a lot of double packs and demo discs that surpass gadget racers in price, and I get that these are limited, rare commodities, but Jesus Christ, guys! I think the best way to illustrate how ludicrously expensive the GameCube is to collect for is the fact that official component cables are 185 pounds. Why? The most expensive game on the DS? Depends on how far you're willing to stretch the definition of game. If you were to ask price charting, they'd be more than happy to inform you that the priciest DS game is My World, My Way, going for roughly £230. But seeing as CEX refuses to believe that My World, My Way exists, 
they'd tell you that Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver were the most expensive games in the console's library. But I'm gonna have to slap a big ol' asterisk in there. It is true that Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver are the most expensive DS games that CEX sell, but that's only if you get the Pokewalker alongside them. Without the Pokewalker, these games come down by 52 pounds. And when you consider the fact that they sell Pokewalkers for 42 pounds, you realize they're robbing you. You're paying 10 pounds extra for cardboard. I've seen worse. So, disregarding Pokemon, the priciest Nintendo DS game is Dragon Quest V The Hand of the Heavenly Bride, with Kirby Superstar Ultra coming in at a very close second each going for £145 and £140 respectively. Now, if we take the diss out of disregarding, then I'm pissed. £70, £75, £90, £98! What are we doing here? This is absurd! Again, these were some of the best-selling games on the console. There is no excuse for them to be this expensive. Sure, supply and demand. There's a lot of demand for these games right now, and I get that, but there's also a f**k ton of supply! People wonder why people emulate games? This! This is why! But as a morally upstanding citizen, also known as a game collector, I don't have it in my heart to emulate these games, so I'll eventually succumb to the f**kery of these prices. And I don't even like Pokemon, so I'm f**ked either way! Disregarding special editions, bundles, and the odd not for resale release, price charting lists... British ignorance. As the most expensive Wii game, going for around £140, whereas CEX would argue that the most expensive Wii game is Legend of Seiyuki at £145. And you know what? I have to give credit where it's due. As much as CEX and price charting don't see eye to eye on many things, they do have a mutual understanding that Dokapon Kingdom is the second most expensive game on the Wii, going for about £120. And if nothing else, you gotta respect that. According to price charting, the most expensive 3DS game here in PAL regions is Senran Kagura 2 Deep Crimson. You heard it here first, folks! Not only do you get the shame of owning the booby box art game for the console you'd play on the bus, but you also get the shame of paying £200 for it. Have fun explaining that purchase to your parents. For the first time in known history, CEX actually thinks Senran Kagura 2 is less expensive than price charting does, not more expensive, and are instead preaching to the masses about how Etrian Odyssey 5 is actually the most expensive 3DS game. Propaganda, it's propaganda. Over in the States, the rarest and most expensive 3DS game is Barbie Groom and Glam Pups. What do you mean this game didn't sell well? This game goes for over $400, which is absolutely insane. Especially considering this exact same game is available on the Nintendo DS and Wii. Did the entire population really say, I'll happily buy this game on the DS, but on the 3DS? You ask too much of me. Now we're talking. The Wii U is my bread and butter. The system I'm trying to collect a complete physical library for, and a system whose prices I'm intimately familiar with. You walk up to me on the street and tell me Shmup Collection is the most expensive Wii U game? I call you a fool because Finding Teddy 2 Definitive Edition is the most expensive. Trust me, I know all about this stuff. My life is a lie! Last but not least, the Nintendo Switch's priciest game, according to both price charting and CEX, is the Skylanders Imaginators Starter Pack, going for anywhere between £170 and £230. But Rock, the people cry. Surely you can't count a Skylanders Starter Pack, it includes more than just the game. It has a portal and f ugly figures and no integrity. Alright, you picky bitch. 
Price Charting and CEX also agree that Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time is the most expensive non-Skylanders entity on the system. La di da. Yeah, the Switch came out in the era of the limited print physical indie games, supplied by companies like Super Rare Games, Limited Run Games and the like. And because of their limited quantity, these things go for ludicrous prices nowadays. Pretty much all of the top prices on the Switch are games of this nature. And as someone who prefers physical media to having a roof over his head, even I have a hard time imagining paying hundreds of pounds for a game I could easily just pay pennies for on the eShop. What have I become? A console's priciest game is a fascinating topic to discuss, even if for no other reason than to laugh at the idea of spending so much money on them. But just because a game is the most expensive you can get for a console, doesn't mean it's the best that the system has to offer, so don't feel like you need to fork over stupid amounts of money just to be a true collector of that console. And again, the prices of these games fluctuate like crazy, so if you really do want one or more of these games, it might be beneficial to wait it out and see if they go down in price. But they also might increase in that time, so do what you want. I'm not your f***ing dad. And if you do feel inclined to seek out and play a console's priciest game, more power to ya! You enjoy that game for as long as you can, because at the end of the day, it might have been expensive, but there's always something that'll cost you more. Yeah, owning Chibi Robo is ridiculously expensive, but you want to know what's more expensive? Owning a f***ing house.